Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Rupal Gupta. So I hope you guys are doing great and enjoying this SQL interview preparation series. So guys, today I am back with another interview problem. This problem has been part of LinkedIn's data analyst interview, and in this video we are going to discuss the step by step solution to the problem. So this is a very great problem as it will help you to understand multiple SQL concepts like joining multiple tables, applying group by and having, and using some SQL based functions. But before proceeding further, do not forget to hit the subscribe button so that you do not miss any update regarding my upcoming videos. So guys, let's get started with the problem. So guys, first of all, let's understand this problem statement. The title of this problem is Risky Projects. And as part of the problem statement, it is mentioned over here that we have to identify the projects that are at risk for going over budget. Now, how to define a project as over budget project? So it is mentioned here that a project is considered to be over budget if the cost of all the employees assigned to the project is greater than the budget of the project. So let me rephrase it. So basically we have to identify the over budget project, right? Now how to define the over budget project? So an over budget project can be defined as a project where the cost of all the employees assigned is greater than the target budget, right? So by reading the first two lines, we are able to rephrase it in this manner. So guys, now we are good with these two pointers. Now let's proceed further with the rest of the problem statement. So here it is mentioned that you need to prorate the cost of the employees to the duration of the project. That is. In order to identify the cost of all the employees assigned to a project, we need to take that on prorata basis. For example, the duration of the project is just 6 months. So instead of taking the whole salary, because salary is something which is mentioned for the whole year, we need to take the salary for those 6 months. And suppose there are multiple employees working on a single project. So in that case, we need to take the sum of the salaries of all those employees and that too on the prorata basis. And in the output, we need to print the list of the projects that are over budget with their project name, project budget and the prorated total employee expenses. And we need to round that to the next dollar amount. That is, we need to take the ceiling. Also, for our ease, we have been provided with an hint here. It is mentioned that to make it simpler, we need to consider that all years have 365 days. That is, we are not going to consider the leap year concept here. So now let me make a note of these two things as well. The first thing is the cost of project equals to sum of salary of employees who are assigned to that project, right? And since we need to consider the pro rata basis salary, so we will be dividing it by 365. So this part will be giving us the per day cost of a particular project. Now, in order to calculate the total cost of project, we need to multiply it with the number of days for which the project is on. So basically, this part will give us the number of days for which that particular project is on and this part is giving us per day cost of that project. And by multiplying these two factors, we will be getting the cost of the project, right? Now the fourth pointer is that number of days in an year equals to 365. That is we are not going to use the concept of leap year here. And it is also mentioned that in the output section we need to print three columns. That is in the select part we need to print the project name followed by the project budget and the total expense of the project right so now we have to consider these things into our mind while writing the final solution but before jumping into write the final query let's understand the data sets which are available to us so guys here we have three tables the first one is linkedin projects then we have linkedin employee projects then we have linkedin employee so let's explore these tables one by one the first table is LinkedIn projects. Let's take a preview of this. All right. So here we have five columns or data points. 
ID, title, budget, start date and end date. Right. Now let's take a preview for the second table. The second table is LinkedIn employee projects. That is, we have two data points here, employee ID and the project ID. Followed by the third table, LinkedIn employees. So this table has the details of the employees, that is their name, their ID and salary. So now let's go back to our pointers to fabricate a strategy to solve this problem. All right. So now in the select statement, we want to find out the project name. So this is something that we can take from this table, right? So this table has the details of the projects and we can use this title in the project name column, right? Now for project budget, we also have a data point here. But for the third column, we do not have any data point in any of these three tables, right? That is, we need to create this calculation. So now how to calculate this total expenses of the project? So for this, let's refer this third pointer that we already have defined. The total cost of project equals to sum of salaries of employees divided by 365 multiplied by the number of days for which the project is on, right? So now let's break it further and do some basic mathematics. Now for salary, we already have this salary column in this LinkedIn employees table. And we need to take a sum of all the assigned employees and then we need to divide it by 365 so we are sorted with this part of this calculation so now in order to find out the number of days for which the project is on we need to do a calculation here so here we have seen that we have the start date of the project and the end date of the project so basically we can refer these two data points to find out or calculate the number of days for which the project is on now by using the date diff function, we can calculate the number of days for which the project is on. That is date diff. Now we can pass these two arguments. The first one is end underscore date followed by start underscore date. So now this part will give us the total number of days or duration of project in so guys, now let's proceed further to write the final solution or the final query. But before that, I want to make a point here that since there are multiple tables involved, so obviously we are going to use joins here, right? Now we have to identify which tables we are going to use. First of all, let's identify the data points that we are going to use in the select statement. So we will be using the title, budget, start date, end date, and then what do we want? We want the salary of the employees. That is, we are not using any data point from this second table. That is, we are not using any data point from this second table. That is LinkedIn employee projects. But can we join these two tables directly? Or do we want this as an intermediate table? So let's explore this. So for this, we have ID, title, budget, start date and end date. And in this table, we have employee ID, first name, last name and salary. So there is no data point which we can use to join these tables. So therefore, we will be using this second table because we need to join this table with this table first. And after that, we are going to join that with this third table. That is, we are going to use all these three tables here. So first of all, I will be writing a dot star comma dot star so a is the area that i am going to give to this table b is for this table and c is for the third table right so now first of all let's join these first two tables and see the output so for this a dot star from comma b dot star so it basically it will give all the columns from all these two tables from link in underscore physics so this is our first table and I am giving it an alias A. And now, since we are just interested in those projects for which we have some budget, we have some start date and end date. So I will be taking a inner join here. That is inner join. The name of the second table is LinkedIn projects. I am giving it an alias B. Now the joining condition here will be on A dot. ID. Now this a.id is this 
column right and we are going to join this table on this project id because this is the project id and here we have this project id so a dot id equals to b dot project underscore id right so let me make a correction here it's linkedin it's uh, with small i and similarly it's with small i so now let's execute this part first all right so now after joining these two tables we are getting id that is project id title budget start date end date employee id and project id now i have this virtual table and i want to join this table with the third table so let's take a inner join again so now why i am using an inner join here because i am just interested in finding out the employees to whom a project is assigned right so inner join LinkedIn and I am giving it an alias C and the joining condition would be on V dot employee underscore ID equals to C dot ID and let me mention it C dot star here to select all the columns from the third table that is LinkedIn employee. So now let's, let's execute this. All right. So guys, now we are getting all the columns from all these three tables. But in the select statement, we are supposed to print three columns only. The first column is project name, followed by the project budget, and then the total expenses of the project. So let's do that. So let me replace it with the three column name. So the first is project name. And in order to print the project name, we are going to use this title column that is a dot title followed by the project budget that is a dot budget. And in order to print the third column, we need to perform a calculation. So let's do that. So sum of c dot salary divided by 365. So basically we have discussed this calculation earlier. So this part will give us the per day cost of the project multiplied by the number of days. And in order to find the number of days, we need to take the date depth of a dot end underscore date comma b dot start underscore date. So now this part will give us the duration of this project, right? then we need to multiply these two factors. Also, it is mentioned here that we need to take the next dollar amount. We need to round off to the next dollar amount. So for that, we are going to use ceiling function. So ceiling function will give us the next dollar amount, right? And let's give it an alias as total project cost so guys before executing i have seen there is a mistake so uh, it's c dot sorry a dot start date so both these columns are available in this particular table so we are using a dot end date and a dot start date so now let's execute this to see the output so guys this query is giving us this result so we are getting title, budget and the total projected cost. But this total projected cost is incorrect as it is the sum of all the projects. So basically we need to group it with respect to the projects. So for that we are going to use a group by clause here. So group by a dot title. So grouping with respect to the project name will give us the total project cost for every project. So now let's execute this part again. So now we are getting the title, the budget and the total project cost for every project, right? And since we just want those projects for which the total projected cost is greater than the budget, therefore we need to use having clause here. Further, since we are supposed to print those projects only for which the total project cost is greater than the actual budget, right? So for that, we are going to use having this total project cost 
greater than the budget right so now here we are using having clause instead of where because when we need to compare the columns or the aggregated columns in that case we need to use the having clause that is why we are using having here so now let's execute this all right so now we have filtered our records to only those projects where the budget is less and the total projected cost is greater right also you can confirm by looking at the data so here the budget is some $29,000 whereas the total project cost is $36,000 and same goes for the other records as well so guys now this is the final query and it is giving us the final desired records so now let's take a quick review of this query so here what we are doing we are printing these two columns because these columns are available as it is then in order to calculate this we need to perform this calculation where we are taking the sum of all the salaries of all the employees involved in a project divided by 365 because we are taking the daily cost of project and we are then multiplying it with the number of days for which that project is on and now we are taking the ceiling because this calculation can give us some float value and we want the we are using ceiling function here to get the next dollar amount suppose if this part is giving us some value like thirty thousand point six seven dollars so by using ceiling function we are getting thirty thousand and one dollar so guys this is all about the select part then we are using joins twice we are joining the linkedin projects table with the linkedin employee projects and then we are further joining it with the linkedin employees table and these are the conditions that we have used here after that we have done a grouping based on the project title because we want the projected cost with respect to the title only right and after that we are using having clause here to filter out those records where the budget is less than the total projected cost so guys this way we can write the final solution so if you like this video do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel for more videos like this also you can share these videos with your colleagues and friends so that others also can benefit so guys do share your feedback in the comment section below also if you have any problem statement and you want me to make a detailed solution video on that so you can reach out to me either in the comment section or via gmail linkedin instagram or whatsapp all the details are available in the description section below so thank you for watching keep learning happy learning and stay tuned for the next videos